Human development is about enlarging people's choices and enabling them to live long, healthy and creative lives. It is about much more than the rise and fall of national incomes. Human development is about fighting poverty, but it is also about living with dignity. The goal is human freedom. Human development approach is an approach where we concentrate on human life, its richness, the well-being, the freedom, and how they are developing, how they are changing, and how they can be further enhanced. I think we should get to tell the story of development in terms of how people are faring, not just how production is doing. Some economists, uh, particularly Mahbub al-Haq, the great leader of this, um, feeling unhappy, many of us felt for that for many years, uh, that, that all the economic measures like GNP, etc., concentrated on something rather alienated from human life, commodities, goods, not people and their lives and their freedom. The Human Development Report was first launched in 1990 with the single goal of putting people back at the centre of the development process rather than markets. It is an independent report commissioned by the United Nations Development Programme. The report is translated into at least 13 languages and launched in more than 100 countries annually. Regional and national human development reports are published in several regions and in more than 134 nations. Well, I think the quality of human life is um, reflected in the human development reports. Um, I wouldn't say they are measured as such. Measurement is only a part of the story. The main thing is rich description. And even though poverty is often the lack of freedom to buy enough food, to have enough medicine, to have the opportunity of going to school, it also can take the form of not having the cultural freedom to pursue your lifestyle. I think one of the central points uh, that Human Development Report makes is that it's not the level of income that matters, it is the use that is made of that income. Same income can be used for essential medicines, can also be used for narcotics. It can be used for military equipment and tanks. It can also be used for road construction. The Human Development Index is one part of each year's report. It ranks most countries in the world in terms of three basic human needs. Health, education and income. What Human Development Index does is to try to get a summary picture based on a few aspects of human life because in one real number, one number, you cannot capture a gross reality beyond uh, only a few variables. So it picks up three factors. One is longevity, life expectancy. Another is education and literacy. And third is poverty and the level of income. And that, these three put together in one in a weighted form in an index produces a number which still leaves out many things. So it couldn't be an index of all of human development. The Human Development Index really helped to generate political competition. And just as competition is very good in markets to make them efficient, political competition is also very good. Well, the Human Development Index is a very crude measure, but it's a better crude measure than the gross national product or gross domestic product. That's the best one can say about it. Each year, the report has a theme, looking at a different human development issue. The themes are linked to contemporary world challenges. The choices of the team for the Human Development Reports tend to be reactive in the sense that there is a whole human development set of discussions across the world. But it's not just collective choice within the organization. It's reactive to, I would say, clamor for across the world. There are a whole range of issues that the Human Development Reports have brought onto the agenda thinking about political freedom as, as a critical dimension of, of development, thinking about social justice. I think the Human Development Report brings to bear 
considerations which are rooted in ethical traditions and in traditions of, of social justice. The world that we live in and the inequalities in, in that world and the state in which billions of the world people live is morally unacceptable. In the Human Development Re Report, we've consistently highlighted inequality as a major development challenge. And I think the evidence now is very clear that inequality is a barrier to economic growth, that inequality is a source of conflict, that inequality is a source of social dislocation, and that most people are deeply concerned about inequality. Human development uh, initiatives must seek to address inequalities and exclusion, uh, which are often at the root of violence. They must promote cultural liberty and give people uh, the tools and opportunities they need to lead the lives they value. Every year, the reports analyse the prospects for human development in light of current global trends. They are a comment on matters of concern to poor and rich. One of the big development challenges of our, of our day is globalisation. The most positive aspects of globalisation is that it's adding to efficiency and dynamism uh, in the world economy today. The negative aspect is that it is uh, cutting some people out as rapidly as it is cutting some people in. The big challenge of, uh, uh, for development will be working out that kind of political dynamic within rich countries to create, uh, to promote technology, trade, investment policies that will be helpful for poor countries. Trade is a human development issue because it's one of the threads that links rich countries to poor countries. That's far better to enable the poor to have access to market opportunities rather than to keep them on charity. In the year 2000, leaders of nearly every country in the world pledged to eradicate extreme poverty by the year 2015. Since then, every human development report tracks progress on eight millennium development goals, which embody that pledge. We see inequality, both at a global level and at a national level, as one of the fundamental barriers to accelerating progress towards the Millennium Development Goals. It is within our collective means and resources to eradicate extreme poverty in the world by the second decade of the 21st century. This is a modest goal from a humanitarian point of view, but without sufficient political will, it will still not be an easy goal to attain. We have to strengthen the developmental role of the United Nations. We still are fighting the battles of tomorrow with the weapons of yesterday. Political leaders in rich countries also need to acknowledge that the long-term security of their citizens and the long-term security of the global community depends on tackling the fundamental causes of conflict across the developing world. Human problems are not only in the poor countries, they are also in the rich countries. We may for once find a common yardstick, something that unites us rather than divides us. There is no alternative still right now other than the Human Development Report. So it has, it has a role, it has a place, it has a function, uh, which I think will continue for many years. And when that becomes unnecessary, we will be in a happier world, I think. Oh.